Everyone is using Zoom. 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 Now, while most people are using Zoom on their PC or their Mac, you can use the Zoom app on your iPad and your iPhone. In fact, sometimes that's even easier because the iPhone and the iPad have a built-in microphone and speaker, so you don't have to go through all the setup. Here's a quick tip: before you jump into your Zoom meeting, go into your camera into the selfie mode, and you can just, you know, make sure that you're presentable for the meeting. The first time that you open up the Zoom app on an iPad or an iPhone, it's going to ask you for permission to use the microphone and the camera. It'll ask a few other things as well, but the microphone and camera are the two most important because that's obviously how you're going to join a meeting. Now, Zoom may also ask you for permission to access your calendar, but I would only do that if you know you're going to be scheduling Zoom meetings from your iPad or iPhone, then that way it'll put the meeting right onto your calendar. Now, if at any time you wanna change those settings or you accidentally said don't allow, but then you need to allow it, all you need to do is just go into your settings app and you're gonna scroll all the way down to the very bottom, lots of scrolling here, all the way down until you see the Zoom app, and it'll be the last one probably, and you can tap in there, you can see, you can select what you wanna give the Zoom app access to, including the microphone or camera. The other thing you might wanna allow access to is your photos, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Now, when you join a Zoom meeting, I always recommend that you have your microphone and camera turned off by default. That might sound a little counterintuitive, but it just cuts out any kind of background noise and distractions going on or the shuffling around of your iPhone or iPad when you're getting ready or all those surprise faces when people are like, wait, I'm on camera? I didn't know that. Just a good idea to turn everything off. To do that, go into the Zoom app, go to your settings, and then tap on meetings. And you can see right at the top there, you can turn on always mute my microphone and always turn off my video. Now, while you're here, just scroll down a little bit and turn on always show meeting controls. I'm a big believer in muting yourself when you are not speaking in a meeting, but if you have always show meeting controls on, then that way that unmute button is right there always on the screen. Otherwise, you'd have to tap the screen to toggle it on and off, and that's just too many taps. Just always show meeting controls. That way you can see the microphone and the camera buttons right there. Also, if you are the meeting host, once you start a meeting, you can actually mute everybody that comes in. If you tap on more and tap into meeting settings, you can see, what is it, the third or fourth option, mute on entry. That means anybody that comes into the meeting are gonna be muted by default which is great because then, you know, if they're shuffling around or anything, it's not gonna be distracting to everyone else. Then they'll have the option to unmute themselves when they are ready to speak. Now also, at any time, you can tap the participants tab and you can mute everyone with one tap of the button, mute all. And you also then can elect to give participants the power to unmute themselves or not. Now on the iPhone, there's a kind of a hidden feature called safe driving mode. Now I'm assuming most of you aren't doing a whole lot of driving as much anymore, but this is a very quick way to immediately mute your microphone and turn off your camera. All you have to do on the iPhone is just swipe to the right and immediately you go into safe driving mode. You can see your microphone is automatically muted, your video is stopped, and when you're ready to talk, you simply just tap to speak and now you can talk and when you're done you're done speaking you just turn that off when you're done out of this mode you just simply swipe to the left and you're back in the regular meeting if you have everyone muted how do you know when somebody enters or exits your meeting well we got that covered as well you tap on the more button up there and go to meeting settings and you can see play chime for enter exit go ahead and turn that on and that way, when somebody joins your meeting, you'll hear this little chime. Sounds like a little doorbell or so. But that way you know that someone else joined the meeting, you can tap the participants tab to see who has joined the meeting. And when they leave a meeting, it's a nice little additional chime there just to let you know that somebody has left and uh, they're not sneaking off somewhere. 
Now again, what's great about the iPhone and the iPad, they already have a speaker and a microphone built in and you can use those just fine. But if you want better audio and maybe less distractions, you can actually plug in a pair of earbuds, uh, make sure that they have a microphone on them, or you can use a wireless pair of earbuds or the Apple AirPod. Now, if you use wired earbuds, the iPad and the iPhone just assume that that's what you wanna use. So if you plug these in, that's what they'll default to. But if you have a wireless pair of earbuds or Apple AirPods, for example, and once you plug them in and you get connected on here, you'll see in the upper left corner that there's a little speaker icon there. Now, right now it's already connected to my AirPods, but I can tap this there and I can actually say, I want to use the phone as, as literally like a phone or the speaker on the iPhone, or I can choose to use the wireless earbuds as well. So this is similar to when you're on a phone call, you can choose how you want to listen to the phone call. Now, when you tap start video by default, the iPad and the iPhone are just going to show the selfie camera. That's the camera that's facing you. But if you look in the upper left corner, you can actually switch the camera to use the back camera. Now this is useful if you want to show somebody maybe a document on your desk or some kind of an object on the table, for example, or if you want to take somebody on a tour of your home office or something similar. And when you're done, you can just switch the camera back to the front facing camera. Now, lastly, when you tap the share content button, you have several options to choose from. Uh, the first may seem the most intuitive. It's to share your screen. However, you get this little warning that comes up telling you that everything on your screen is going to be recorded, including notifications. Now, I would only use this if you actually need to show somebody your iPad screen and you're going to be showing the specific apps. Otherwise, I've got a few other options here that might work a little bit better. For example, on the iPhone, if I do share content and tap photos, now this is where you would need to give the Zoom app access or permission to access your photo roll. It'll ask you that first time. But now you can go in and I can select uh, two or three photos, for example. And when I'm done, I tap done down there. And now the photos will actually appear to everybody in the meeting. So it's a neat way to share, share some pictures. In addition, if you tap the little pencil icon, that's adding an annotation to the screen. So you can go in and change your pen color, for example, and you can actually draw right on the screen. Now, if you jump out of the annotation mode, just tap the little pencil again, the annotations actually stay on the screen. So you're really annotating the screen, not the photo, but that's a neat way to show a picture for, right from your picture roll. And to get out of that when you're done, just tap stop share and you'll get right back into the meeting. Next, you have several options from sharing from the cloud, iCloud box, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. Now these are really helpful to maybe share a document and show somebody. For example, if I tap into my Dropbox app here, I can actually share a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or most of people will just simply share a PDF file. I just simply highlight it and tap share. And now that PDF file shows up on my screen. I can actually zoom in if I wanted to show somebody or you can jump to a specific page down here at the bottom. You also still have the annotation tools available. In fact, a few more rectangles and ovals or you can just change the color or something and maybe draw a square or something around the document. Now, if you jump out of this again, you're actually annotating the screen, not the document. So you might wanna go back into annotations and just clear those annotations there before you maybe go to a different page. Again, just tap stop share to get out of that. Now, the last option on here is really available only on the iPad, although you'll see that the iPhone can view it, but it's the whiteboard option down at the bottom. This is really neat. Just gives you a blank canvas here that you can tap at the bottom into some of these annotation tools and pick a color, for example, and the pen and do a little drawing on here, a little sunshine. You can actually even add some text on here. And what's neat is that whoever else is in your meeting can actually add their own drawings to this whiteboard. So I can jump in here, change the color for a pen and just start drawing and you can see what the others are drawing. Now, you can actually tap the little trash can in the bottom right corner here on the iPad, and you can clear 
all the drawings are just the other people's drawings if you don't want to play nice. You can actually have up to 12 whiteboards. C click this little plus symbol down at the bottom and then that little two next to it there shows you all of the whiteboards that you might have available if you want to delete one or jump to a specific page. Now the other thing I would say in this is if you want to save this whiteboard, don't stop sharing until you tap the three little dots in the bottom right corner and say save to photos. And what that's going to do is it'll just save that option into your photo roll so that you can access it later. When you stop sharing, the whiteboards are going to get erased on there. So just make sure you do that before you stop sharing. So those were seven tips for using the Zoom app on your iPad and your iPhone. Hope they were helpful. I know a lot of you are using Zoom these days. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.